What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Q&A session here on my YouTube channel. First off, how do you get a question answered by me? It's easy. Make sure you're following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter with 1M and at Cody Miller on Instagram. When I post a picture on Instagram asking for questions, that's your best chance. It's been a little while since I've done one of these Q&As. I'm sorry, I've been really busy. Uh, I just got a whole lot going on right now. But I'm gonna make a real effort to start doing more Q&As and to start answering more questions from you guys because honestly, interacting with the viewers is like one of the most fun things I get to do with this YouTube channel. So I'm gonna start doing more. I'm just sitting out here in my backyard playing with my dogs and I figured why not do a Q&A, you know? It's really nice outside, so. Our first question today comes from Natalie B. Burkut. And Natalie asks, do you know Scott Welts? Yes, I do know Scott Welts. Scott Welts is a 2012 American Olympian in the 200 meter breaststroke. And if I remember correctly, he got sixth in the Olympics in that event. Um, I know the guy, super nice guy, really liked him. I remember watching that guy at Olympic trials in 2012 shock the entire United States by winning the 200 breaststroke at Olympic trials. He was next to two previous Olympians, two former Olympians in that event, uh, Brendan Hansen and Eric Chanteau. And from lane six, he took off on the third 50 and was too far ahead and no one could catch him. And he won that race. And I'll never forget watching that guy win that race because when Scott Welts won the 200 breaststroke at Olympic trials, a guy no one had ever heard of, no one knew his name, no one no one expected him to make the Olympics, no one expected anything from him. Watching that guy win that event and then make the Olympics showed me that it was possible. You know, it gave me hope that maybe someday I would be able to make the Olympics. You know, uh, it's a true underdog story. That guy, Scott Welts, really admire him. Um, and also, he's a super cool guy. So if you know Scott personally, tell him I say hey. I love underdog stories. I just, I just, they're just, oh, I love them. Next question comes from Evan Angle, who asks, is it mandatory for a guy to wear a cap during college practice? I see lots of guys in your vlog doing it. No, it's not, it's certainly not mandatory. We have a few guys who train without caps, I think, but most people do wear caps. And the reason for that is, you know, most high school swimmers don't swim with a cap, um, and then their hair just fries, right? Like you see the, the blonde swimmers with the fried tips, and you know they're swimmers, and that's like a thing. We know when I was in high school, I had a shaved head and there were points in time when my hair was really fried and really bleached and blonde. But I think that in, in college and like on my team, a lot of guys just, they want to have nicer hair. Um, they just, they don't want that bleach blonde hair look anymore. And so they just wear caps. You know, when I started swimming in college, I was like, you know what? I'm in college. I'm going to do something different. I'm just going to grow my hair out. And that's what I did. I just started wearing a cap. And so, no, to answer your question, it's not mandatory. I think guys just care about their hair on my team. Uh, next question comes from Tara P. Drew, who asks, what do you think about international students on college teams? Do you think they are good components for the team? Yes, I love our international swimmers, our international students. They bring a whole new dynamic to the team, you know, growing up in a different part of the world, um, you know, learning, learning from different cultures, but to me, a lot of our international swimmers are our hardest working swimmers because you know they've come from places where they weren't necessarily given everything and where, where education wasn't guaranteed and where a program, a swim program that has all the facilities and all the resources that you could possibly want was never guaranteed. And they work their butt off, man. You know, I lived with an international student for three years. His name was Ahmad. He's from Egypt. He's a diver, you know, he's an Olympic level diver. And that guy was one of the most hardworking, most kind, most team oriented individuals and you know a lot of that came from growing up in a part of the world where you know he had to work really hard and he wasn't gifted anything and I'm not saying by any means that other people on my team aren't like that it's just that a lot of times for the international students they come here and and they know that they're here for their sport or for whatever and that it's their chance to to kind of make the American dream happen right where you know your promise, if you work hard, the results will come. And um, in my experiences with all of our international swimmers, the, ma the majority of them, they've all been fantastic teammates, fantastic people, good, hardworking people, and um, no, I just, we love them. I don't know what's going on with the whole lighting situation. It's like it, my camera doesn't know if it's bright or dark or what, I'm sorry. Okay, our next question comes from RFD Hazmat, who asks, your practices are in Indiana, but you still swim for Sandpiper of Nevada. How does that work? I don't understand. Well, it's pretty simple. I went to college here at Indiana. I train with them still because I still live here. But when I go to competitions, I represent the Sandpipers of Nevada. 
and that's because my club team back home is the Sandpipers of Nevada. I grew up in Las Vegas, I went to high school in Las Vegas, and that's the club team I've represented for a decade. And um, this past year, I decided I wanted to, wanted to represent them again. They're kind of like a sponsorship, right? So they give me some financial support, they help me with travel costs, they help me with hotel costs, they help me with, with certain things, you know, with, with meat dues and whatnot. And in exchange, I represent them, and you know, my name carries a little bit of weight in, in our little world of swimming here in the United States. And so, you know, when I do well, people see that I'm swimming for that club, but they also know that that's where I came from, right? Like I grew up there and, you know, in a way it's a way for me to give back to that program, right? I'm still, I'm still swimming. I'm, I'm still, I'm still swimming. And by representing them, it's, you know, it's, it's giving them the credit that they deserve because without that program, you know, I definitely wouldn't be an Olympian. There's no doubt about that. At, at some major meets, like for at Olympic trials, for example, here in the United States, you're actually allowed to represent two teams. So when I swim at Olympic trials in 2020, um, I'll, there will be two names, two team names attached to my name. It will be Cody Miller representing Indiana University and Sandpipers of Nevada, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just it's it, to answer your question, it's kind of a sponsorship. And um, I train with my college team still, but I represent my club team from back home. It's that simple. Colin Wong asks, what's the best way to practice dolphin kicking? Honestly, it's just doing it all the time, right? So here at Indiana, we have a kickout group where they do an entire practice specifically working on underwater kicks. They do underwater kick sets, but more important than that is the way that our coach, Coach Westfall, designs certain workouts. He'll write warm-ups where it's like 400 choice, four 100s free to send one to four, 450s to send one to four, but every set has a set number of dolphin kicks off the wall. So that 400, you have to have four dolphin kicks off of every wall. Those four 100s, you have to have six dolphin kicks off every wall. Those 450s, you have to kick out to 15 meters off of every wall. So it's just doing them all the time routinely. That's my advice. If you practice something and you practice it well all the time, then in time you will get better at it. Okay, that's gonna be a wrap on today's q and I'm sorry it was short, but you guys sent in like a thousand questions last week when I asked for questions. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do a Q&A video every day this week. I'm gonna just keep pumping them out, do a few questions and, and try and get more questions answered for you guys because I really like doing that. Yeah. So please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Share my channel, help it grow. Remember, I have vlogs every week, usually Wednesday, but this week I actually dropped my vlog on Monday, just trying something a little bit different. If you haven't seen that vlog, it'll be linked in the description of this video. Um, check that out. Um, I'm gonna keep doing these Q and A's, guys. I'm gonna keep trying to get to your questions. All right, and that's a wrap for me. I'm gonna play with my dogs and make some dinner, and until the next video, I will see you guys later.